Hello. Um, wait. Okay. Let's start over. <laughs> you have to put that in. <laughs> Hi. Welcome to our tenth day yeah. of our vlog, so far our vlog series. And today we're going to talk about one of the seven key areas of life, and that is spirituality. Mm-hmm. Or spiritual. Mm-hmm. We're having fun with this series. Yeah. I'm having fun. We're um, coming from our RV in uh, the Creekside Campground. And our luxury accommodations. Our luxury accommodation <laughs> and our TV set. <laughs> and um, our dog Coda looking on that might jump in the scene like he likes to do sometimes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, we, um, we wanted to devote time to each of the seven key areas because we're f- we feel they're so essential mm-hmm. to hold holistically with a W. Um, mm-hmm. When we're working with someone in Soful Heart, we can't compartmentalize, we've talked about this before, but mm-hmm. we don't like to compartmentalize one area of their life from another. And I just want to tell a quick story about my background. And this is rare. Jillian <laughs> doesn't tell many stories. so Watch uh, out. Well, it's not a real <laughs> st- I mean, I just, <laughs> I just wanted to say that um, I always was drawn to um, the emotional area of life and especially uh, therapy and um, even in particular psychiatric um, study and I was really wanted to work with schizophrenics and bipolar and, and was was headed my way at university to doing that to becoming a psychiatrist and what I realized a couple of years into school even the first year was that it was so clinical and dry and I was reading books written by mostly men that I couldn't feel and certainly it didn't seem to resonate with any of the issues that I had had and it was a whole bunch of case studies and scientific analysis and to be a psychiatrist is years and years and years of schooling and I I always felt there was something off about just medicating people you know giving them a bunch of lithium and you know they're drooling and they're barely functioning what kind of life is that so I was always at odds I had a feeling I was gonna go alternative at some point and that happened very quickly And the other aspect of it was that there was no acknowledgement of the spiritual. There was no, um, do you want to come up then? Come on up. Our dog is protesting. You want to come up? (laughs) Come on up. Come on. Anyway. um, Maybe he's just taking in the story. (laughs) (laughs) Maybe. But it's a little distracting. Um, I'm, I'm with you. There was no acknowledgement of this um, you know I was interested in psychic studies I I didn't know how I felt about God because I didn't resonate with religion but there was no exploration of that within therapeutic studies there was there was no way to blend the two of them so I think that was the big piece when I um, first discovered emotional body enlightenment the work you and I met was that it did acknowledge these parts and the emotional body but also our souls and past lives and different incarnations and wow it was so rich and of course it's all of it mm-hmm. you know and it just lit up for me that it validated what I had been feeling it's interesting that you it's like you needed to go into the domain of um, that first phase of feeling into psychiatry and even considering studying for it Mm -hmm. Um, and to feel your soul's angst needed to bake you needed that dense setting for in which your soul could bake and go no this isn't me right I I surprised it feels like at that stage in your life it was a surprise to you that that you had this arising while you're trying to stay on a course. I actually, I started taking, I'll admit, I took a LSD a few times during that time, and that was so much more alive. The mm-hmm. analyzations we would get into, my, our, me and my friends, I didn't realize I was feeling parts. Mm-hmm. I was actually facilitating people, mm-hmm. and I didn't realize it. Mm-hmm. And we would go into soul dynamics, mm-hmm. and we would go into emotional dynamics, and my, mm-hmm. that was way more interesting than the classes mm-hmm. that I was taking. <laughs> I, I really feel like I could have breezed through and become a psychiatrist, but I think my soul would have felt like it was dying. It would have been soul killing. Totally. Yeah. Mm. 
So into setting that up, um, this is why it's soulful heart mm -hmm. and not just the, why Wayne and I aren't therapists mm -hmm. because it's too limiting right. to us and to the people that we serve. Mm -hmm. And I think we, we draw people who have tried therapy mm -hmm. and have said it's, there's not enough there. It's so non-holistic. It sees um, what we're suffering as being compartmentalized down to the very chemistry of the body as the answer. Yes. Isolated. Sure, there's a chemical reaction it going on that you can track in the physical body, but when you isolate it and don't um, look at the holism of life, so there's so much focus on the brain chemistry, which, in our sense, there is something that manifests in the brain chemistry. Like electroshock treatment, for example, oh. that's scary stuff. Mm -hmm. There is something that manifests in the brain chemistry, but we're saying the root is the emotional and soul wounding. Right. And if you heal that, mm -hmm. your brain, brain, the brain chemistry is a symptom mm -hmm. down the line, yeah. not the issue. Mm -hmm. And and we know we don't have scientif scientific data to back mm -hmm. that up. This and, is our experience. And a non-integrated, a non-holistic approach is actually barbaric to the human being because the the fix is worse than the problem mm -hmm. it's it's, it, it, it's it, really it, it's, worse it's than an, it's an age-old barbarism yes um, she, the, I, I really think the shock treatment is the kind of the height of it um, but then also I would offer that many religions are barbaric mm -hmm. as well so as we're right. going into spirituality this area of spirituality what I feel is so unique about what we're offering is how it emphasizes having a healing, intimate, direct, and loving connection mm -hmm. with the divine and your spiritual gifts. Coming from the seat of your authority and power, not uh, middlemaned with a priest, a pastor, a guru. Yeah, one so of the that things... that in some of the, um, just a little bit of the writing that we... We're going to share this paragraph, the four sentences of this paragraph. Yeah, this from writing. From our website this, about the spiritual uh, area. Right, this writing is on our website as well. Mm -hmm. um, but it's much nicer when you read it. You just said the, the first <laughs> one, which is it is our birthright to experience an intimate, personal, and direct connection with the Divine Mother and Divine Father, including Yeshua, mm -hmm. without need for dogmatic morality, religion, guru devotee relationship or any middleman priest or pastor mm -hmm. so we just flew in the face of what you know millions yeah. perhaps billions of people believe yeah I'm, I'm part of me is is um, reading that sentence and remembers um, pastor pastor so-and-so in my church it was pastor Ken and Pastor Ken, if you're listening. <laughs> <laughs> I doubt uh, Pastor Ken is listening. <laughs> um, the, the title power in that, he wasn't, he was like, I've been a painter for much of my life, so it's like, mm -hmm. I'm painter, painter Wayne, you know, <laughs> <laughs> painter Wayne. Hi, it's Painter Wayne calling. No, it doesn't it doesn't quite have the ring to it. I kind of want to call ourselves pastors. Yeah. Pastor Jillian and Pastor Wayne. <laughs> Wait, are women pastors? I don't even know yes, that it, much. Well, in some <laughs> really progressive circles, yes. Um, but the the title power that's in in the priest, the pastor, the middleman. Mm -hmm. We're saying we're obliterating that and saying the authority rests right here. The only reason that pastor gained this false sense of authority is because you gave your power to him. Yes. And he gladly uh, put it in his The own. false self gladly said, sure. Yep. You abdicated. He um, latched onto it. And uh, it created a whole powerful reality of esteem and, and even some movement. Um, but we're saying that shit pile is toxic to the bottom. And and the guru devotee dynamic which originated in India is also toxic. Mm -hmm. And and it also I just want to say quickly, you know, so many gurus have major issues in their personal lives, like personal abuses, sexual mm -hmm. abuse, huge amounts of greed and mm -hmm. um, ridiculous spending and corruption. Mm -hmm. 
And that's because the emotional area of their lives mm -hmm. hasn't been touched. Yeah. They're just given this exalted status and by their, all their, their devotees. Their sexuality is either squashed into nothing, mm -hmm. where they're androgynous, or it's rampantly going off in, in a bunch of toxic abuse. That's right. Um, so claiming this direct, I have a direct and intimate connection, like mm -hmm. claiming that, starting to claim that, changes everything. Mm. I promise you. So it, even mm -hmm. if, if you're in a place where you've already said no to religion, you've already said no to a guru, you've said no to a, a regular spiritual practice, or maybe you have one that's self-directed more than any... I, 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 it feels like you're right on the cusp. Mm -hmm. Because what we feel is that there's a necessary phase of saying no to these things, and then you end up back in a phase of saying yes to the divine. Mm. But when we say yes to the divine, it's a whole different kind of relationship mm -hmm. than what's previously offered. Mm -hmm. You want to read the next the one? The one that's felt. Oh, my nose is just so itchy. I just want out that. Oh, okay. itchy nose. Okay. I have, to, I have to listen to this video at nighttime just to take in what you said many times. Like, yeah, because it's brilliant. It's brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> it's erratically brilliant. Okay, here's a, here's a good one that scares part of me still a little bit because of my Christian past um, and it's around the word daemon because it's so close to the word demon and we embrace a daemon as a part of us that holds our soul connection uh, so this is the sentence connection with our daemon or soul guardian allows us to inhabit our soul bigness fulfill our soul purpose and express our soul gifts and to heal past life wounding um, Wow, that there is a part of us that's been with us. This explains so much. I can feel over my history, um, of course, recently, deeply diving into the daemon, mm -hmm. but even feeling it back over the decades, there would be an uprising of a part of me with so much energy and brilliance and desire and angst and, and then collapsing back into myself and burying it and only to resurface again. Mm -hmm. that had juice and energy um, and maybe it would come out in writing or a conversation with a friend um, or with my uh, with my first wife um, but it's like oh my god there's this whole dimension of me and when it's here how do I how do I latch on to it how do I um, and yet it was scary too it would draw caution from friends and my first wife and because uh, it was powerful and it was uncontrollable in another way and we and and so that's the whole christian freak out around a demon and we're saying no 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 this is a daemon well i i wanted to say that um this is probably one of the we have many controversial aspects to what we're offering because controversial is good mm -hmm. that means that you're going off of the mainstream turning my volume down because and I don't want the phone to ring <laughs> <laughs> but um, this is one of the controversial aspects of what we offer I, I got into a bit of a heated debate with a therapist who was an energy healer it turned out so I was surprised mm -hmm. that she was resistive to this idea of a daemon she was very interested in the parts idea mm -hmm. but oh I don't want to deal with anything disembodied she and, was, and she I was a th she was more than a th than a therapist, she was like a psychiatrist, wasn't she? No, I think she was a therapist. Okay, so but pretty. either way, <laughs> um, but she also did energy work. So she was acknowledging that mm -hmm. the soul and the heart needed mm -hmm. healing. But what I said was that it doesn't, it is <clears throat> disembodied. It feels disembodied, usually it hovers over your right side. Um, but we don't relate to it in a disembodied way. We connect with it as if it was like any other part of us. And, and yet at the same time, you can feel the multi, multi-dimensionality to the daemon. You can feel that they're not here. Mm -hmm. It's just a consciousness that continues to awaken the more that you connect with them. Mm -hmm. But it's really about being in the emotional ground with them. What hasn't happened is they haven't been felt mm -hmm. by the human heart. I was, I was sort of awakened to this um, about five years ago. And as I've said before, the daemon is a, is a term that's ancient, um, even back to Socrates who used mm -hmm. it. And it's really our inspiration, it holds our inspiration, our pipeline to the divine, I say, which is, you know, our connection and feeling of it. So if you are kind of still in that no zone mm -hmm. 
when it comes to experiencing the divine, it's most likely your daemon who's guarding you, you know, who helped you say no to okay. religion, but now doesn't know any other way to say yes, doesn't mm -hmm. know that it can say yes and also be felt mm -hmm. at the same time. And it hasn't been felt. It's so it hasn't been acknowledged. It's so simple. It hasn't been seen. They don't want to be if seen. If this resonates for you, try one thing. Get about a piece of pen and paper and say, I feel you inside of me in times of da 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 da. I wonder what it's like to be you. Just and wait for a response. I feel you Ignol I'm trying to s express this this thing of acknowledging the presence of the demon and immediately personifies and differentiates that this I, feeling, this itching here's a, here's a isn't question. just, isn't well, just a, right, right, an let me, energy, it's a part of you. I don't want to forget this, so I'm, I'm interrupting you. Okay. Which is that I think a really important question that you could ask is what is getting in the way of me claiming my relationship with the divine mm. and my soul purpose? Mm. And see what you get back, mm -hmm. and that voice you get back is most likely your daemon. Mm. that's telling you what's getting in the way and why what is getting in the way of of me claiming my relationship with the divine mm -hmm. this connection that's mm -hmm. mine that's my birthright right. and claiming my soul purpose and you'll probably get a pretty distinctive voice mm -hmm. in answer back and it will give you the reasons there's always good reasons just like mm -hmm. with the false self yeah. and it also it holds our soul history we don't come in this life conscious of our soul history mm -hmm. Oh, we're already almost out of time. I know, I'm just thinking. <laughs> I, 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 uh, let's just go read the to, next two. Do we have to finish part two tomorrow? Um, yes, because cause then we get into the major religions and their patriarchal I, pic I mean, God picture. I mean, <laughs> you're probably going to tell two more stories on the next two. <laughs> I guess so. This edition held a Jillian story, so we just want to acknowledge that. This is notable. I, I want to say one more thing about the daemon then, if we're not stressed to get through all of this. Well, yeah. Let's do a part two tomorrow. Okay? And, and the, yeah, we'll... Let's, let's save okay. that. Because you'll want to talk a lot about the religion one. I will. I think so. <laughs> That's your background. Yeah. Um, but I want to say that in the, in the work that I did before in EBE, and that when I left EBE, it was so soul-crushing because the way we were cut off, um, that's when I began to feel, I had done a lot of work with my parts, but that's when I began to feel this energy, and I was reading um, Ken Wilbur at the time, who also acknowledges the daemon. He doesn't acknowledge working with the daemon the way that we do, um, but integral spirituality, if you're at all familiar with that. Um, and Ken Wilbur was offering the daemon is the muse mm -hmm. as well, is our inspiration. And um, that's when it started really feeling to me like there was another entity there that I needed to communicate with. And it was actually my daemon that got me out of that group. Mm -hmm. And I believe it was my, there may be guardian angel. I don't like to use that term because there's so much associated with guardian angel. And they're much more wounded than that. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So that's why we say daemon. But they're not I feel all like love and light. I feel like it was my daemon though that was steering me out of my very near suicidal mm -hmm. feelings as a teenager and saying no no go this way mm -hmm. you I, I feel like we're given a daemon if we have a purpose this life of teaching I don't know if everyone has one how could I know that but certainly the people that we've drawn have one yeah. and sometimes you actually need to start with yeah. start there versus getting into the younger parts yeah. or the parts you can't go anywhere without the daemon sometimes. Yeah. You know, having a spiritual, you meet somebody and they find out you're spiritual or you have some spiritual interest and they like to download all their stories of when they had a daemon yes. contact, a near, a near death experience. They saw a ghost or they and, and, uh, communicated like, with the loved one. All of this past. is undigested, but you're kind of, you feel porous and like you get this and so woo, they, they download it all. And what we're saying and what we're offering is getting to know your daemon is to digest all that you've been carrying around around your soul bigness that you don't know how to integrate mm -hmm. you don't know how to embrace and all of the lifetimes that that daemon is holding all that wounding that hasn't yeah. been processed or digested and we'll take the woo woo out of it and we'll embrace that yes those were powerful experiences that defined mm -hmm. um that have to do with your soul um Taking the woo-woo out means that we feel it. Mm -hmm. They don't just remember it. We don't put you in a regressive state. There's no mm -hmm. hypnosis involved. Mm -hmm. It comes up as it's meant to come up. 
and it's taken as normal everyday life. There's no grandiosity about the... Right. Yes, you're a big soul, and so are we. Um, yeah. <laughs> That's good. Try today. Okay. <laughs> Feels like we just got started. But wow. Okay. <laughs> hmm. Thank you for joining us. Thank you again. Bye. Bye.